in the basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special Derby match day preview between Manchester United and Manchester City. As good as it gets in world football. Jersey Joe Archino, join alongside me is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Kevin Walsh in the building. So there's a little tension in the room right now, you know. I think if people have listened to me before, you know I bleed powder blue from Man City. And Kevin Walsh is a pretty darn big Manchester United supporter. So there's some tension, but we're going to cut through the red tape, and we're just going to get right down to business. Kevin, when the manager of your club says, <laughs> we're not the favorites here, not going to lie, not the confidence I really want walking into the biggest match of my season. Um, you know, I, I think maybe Van, Van Hall is, is taking uh, the approach of, you know, let's let's be honest, let's not act as if they're not atop the table um, ty type of deal, and let's treat City, you know, as what they are, and that's currently the best team in the Prem. I, I think that, you know, obviously you never really want to hear your manager praising the other team to that level, but considering all things, I think he's kind of saying that we're not at all overlooking this, that we are preparing for this match as hard as, as as any, if not harder than all of them, because we know the importance and just how good this team is. I think that's a fair point, too. And I mean, it's one of those things where City kind of is in a weird position where they're missing their two most important players for this derby right now. I mean, no Aguero, no David Silva. But I think you look at the guys who, like Kevin De Bruyne who've really stepped up for them. We saw Wilfred Bonney last weekend really stepping up. It's taken a long time, but he finally did it. Raheem Sterling has stepped up very well in their place. So City right now is kind of finding their groove again, and then the win against Sevilla the other day in the Champions League kind of furthers that a little bit more. Um, but I I'm with Van Gaal in the fact that, look, there you can't ever sleep in a game like this. It is at Old Trafford, which gives them that nice edge. But at the same time, the, the way things ended for Man City last year, the way that they just got thrashed on by Man United in that second time, <laughs> that I think that's going to carry over a little bit. Um, you know, you know, I, I obviously the thing is, even if the, you know, with the thrashing of last year, every time these two meet, it, it's a big deal, and there's and there's a lot of of tension, as you know, you mentioned, you know, even just speaking between the fans. But I think the players they know the importance of this one. For, for me, you know, the thing about City, as you mentioned, no Aguero, no David Silva, um, such a deep team. And right now, Kevin De Bruyne is uh, it's just on another level. I mean, he has been worth every penny. I think they maybe should send Wolfsburg uh, even yeah. some more money. Maybe even throw uh, Jose Mourinho and Chelsea side some money hey, for their foolish that. mistake. Um I believe right now the stat line for him is in his first eight games, um, he's got five goals and five assists. Yes. That is as good as it gets. And another big thing for Ten City... shots, too. Yeah, I mean, another big thing for City, too, is Raheem Sterling coming off of a really nice performance, got his first hat trick. Um, and that's big because they need Sterling for his for his attacking presence. He needs oh, to be speed. able to get in behind on, on defenses. And um, obviously doing that in their last fixture, and, and that's going to be that something... That that's really important for them because he's not the strongest of guys, obviously. Um, but th and that's where he's going to have to beat the United uh, defensive line because they're big guys, but they're not the paciest in the world. So I, I think that those two guys are going to be key coming uh, up on Sunday. There is absolutely no question about it. And it's one of those things when David Silva is in the match, he's kind of the catalyst for everything Man City wants to do. He sets the pace. He sets the tone. He sets everybody up with the passes. Um, and Raheem Sterling is a guy where I think he brings more speed than David Silva does. Not as a good touch and precision as David Silva does. When the two of them are working together, it's, just, it's, it's in perfect harmony. But you do not have David Silva, but you will have him. And I'm with you. I think when you look at the m amount of money Man City spent to bring in a guy like Sterling and to bring in a guy like De Bruyne, a lot of times we see they get off to the rough starts, there are huge expectations, the fans turn against them quickly, and it's a difficult position to be in for club and player. But you look at what De Bruyne has done right away. You look at how Sterling has really plunged forward right away. It has worked out as well as you could have asked for City, and even with some of the injuries they've had this season with Aguero and with Silva, I think that right now City's in a good position, but again, this is a game 
that you just can't comprehend the emotional investment on both sides. Uh, everything always goes out the window here. Each time the derby starts, as soon as that ball is put placed on the pitch, you just never know. Yeah, and also, I mean, we you know we are giving the proper praise to City, but United has been in uh, some 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 good form themselves. They took the really uh, embarrassing defeat to Arsenal, and I think that that really started to raise some big questions of concern because I think that was the United team's real true first tough opponent, a, a team that is going to be up uh, competing with them, you know, all season long, and, and due to that game, Arsenal is now in second based on goal differential, even though they have the same points, um, but United couldn't have responded any better with the 3-0 victory over Everton, who obviously, you know, they're, they're not one of the top, you know, three clubs, no, top four clubs, side. but they're they're they're, they're a very side. good team, um, and to put, beat them 3 nothing, I think, was a big statement for United, where I think that... Um, you know, Manchester United is gonna have to try to rely on it. That's it's the guys up front. It's it's the experience and the veteranship of Wayne Rooney. I mean, he's been. I mean, this game it probably is just feels like another day to him at this point. He's done this so many times, and that experience because there's a lot of new guys. There's a lot of guys playing in their first uh, derbies, and, and I think that that is something that is gonna be very very important. Is him coaching these guys up for this game. And then it's going to be the young guy, Anthony Martial, who could not be playing any better. For, for a 19-year-old, for all the scrutiny that he was under because of the, the large transfer fee that he was was paid, I, I really think that he has been amazing. He got his first Champions League goal. Um on Wednesday, so if it, you know, Marshall has a flair for the dramatic, and I, I wouldn't be all too surprised to see him put one in because he seems to always be ready in these big games. Let me ask you this, Kevin. We know in terms of possession, Man City is a side that just they dominate it, they flat out dominate many, many times, and the Man United defense has been suspect at times. How well do you think that they could keep this possession battle in their favor? Do you really favor their defense in this game? Well, I, I think for United, they found so much trust in Smalling. Um, their their back line, obviously, coming into the season was something that was going to get a lot of question marks. I think Smalling has been, at the minimum, one of, if not the best center back in the entire Prem up to this point. Um, the problem, though, was, was you know, the Luke Shaw injury really hurt because, um, you know, he's a very good defender, but he also can take a lot of pressure off the defense in pushing forward. So that's um, had Marcus Rojo now play out to the left back position, but he He's done a nice job. What I think is something that's very interesting for United as well is going to be Bastian Schweinsteiger. I think that's going to be a huge key. In I'm, this I'm not, you know, I'm not sure exactly what the starting eleven is going to be because you know sometimes they go with Carrick, uh, you know, sometimes they prefer they prefer to use Schweinsteiger off the bench. But if Schweinsteiger is starting, I mean, this is a guy who has played in every big game imaginable. I mean, you know, he's won a World Cup for you know, so he, I mean, he's done it all. Um, but this is it's. It's another element, so I think that um, you know, it's it, his performance is going to be key for for United to be successful. I, I think that he's still kind of waiting to have his true big Manchester moment where he can look up to his fans and they cheer they cheer his name. And I think that this could be maybe you know a game really calling for him to make a big statement. Well, we have about two minutes left, Kevin. I can't let you go without making a prediction. <laughs> obviously. If you have to call it for the first leg, like, these two teams play each other. Who you got winning? Um, I, I, I really, I really am going to favor Manchester United for for the reasoning that I think Anthony Martial is is a magic man. I really do, and I know he's 19, and I know that's crazy, and I know that this, you know, this game is so different from every other game that he'll play. Um, but I really think that he is, he's a man of magic, and I could see this game being 1-1, uh, a deadlock for, for a little bit with even, you know, City dominating a lot of the game where they could be, um, you know, being dominant. But I, I think that the United backline is good enough to keep them out, and then I could just see Anthony Martial putting in a late one. Interesting. I, I'm going draw here. I got a 1-1 draw here. I think you look at the way that these two teams are right now, I think injuries clearly is a big part of it. If I am guaranteed I have a David Silva in this game and the way that him and Sterling play off of each other, I'm probably going 2-1 City. 
But I think without Silva right now, I think United, like you said, I really liked what I've seen from that back line. And I just don't know if Raheem Sterling enough setting up everything is going to give them enough to beat that back line consistently. But I do think possession will be a little bit more in City's favor. But at the end of the day, there will be goals on both sides and we will get a draw. We will certainly see, though, how it plays out. Jersey Joe Archino here with Kevin Walsh. It's as good as it gets in world football this weekend. Manchester United against Manchester City. The Manchester Derby. Be there and we will see it. what happens.